Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. All right, they want to know which function shown below has a greater average rate of change on the interval from negative 2 through 4. And they're, they're using square brackets, so we are including negative 2 and 4. Justify your answer. The average rate of change, the basic idea, as you've probably seen, uh, let me just scroll down, is that you're going to have some function. Let's have some function. And let's say it's our y and x axis. And it's got curvature to it, right? And you want to find the average rate of change, let's say between negative 2, let's pretend that's here, uh, here, and 4, which maybe is about here. Um, how do you do that? Well, the average rate of change finds the slope, essentially, between those two points, and uses that slope to approximate what the, av what the actual average rate of change over that interval would be. Um, and the idea, the generic kind of formula that we can use here is we can say, well, it's going to be the difference of your outputs over the difference of your inputs, which is the formula for slope. So for g of x, for example, I'm really going to look at the difference of the outputs, g of 4 minus g of 2, uh, negative 2, excuse me. All right, I'm just plugging in these two things here, over the difference of the inputs, which are 4 and negative 2. So 4 minus negative 2 is 6, right? g of 4 is 179, I did the calculations on that already, and then g of negative 2, make sure you get negative 49. When you enter that, be sure to enter negative 2 in parentheses when you're squaring it or cubing it. And that's going to get us our average rate of change of, uh, if we work this out in the calculator, we get 38. Okay, that's 38. What about here? If we go from negative 2 to 4, what do we get? Well, difference of the outputs, 80 minus 1.25, just in a different color. So we're going from, from these two, between these two points here and here. So we have, um, I'm going to write over here, 80 minus 1.25 over 4 minus negative 2. So it's going to be over 6 again. That's going to be 78.75 over 6 which is 13.125, which is less than 38. So g of x, you can say, and let me circle that in blue, oh boy, circle that in blue. This was just, oh, we read that, 78.75 over 6, which is 13.125. Well, this is larger. g of x, and then be brief, say since 38 is greater than 13.125. That's it. Really quick explanation. Or you could say, if they give you context for the problem, use the context. Like here they give us inputs and outputs that are abstract, x and f of x. But if it's days and temperature, use those words about the context to explain your thinking. Thank you.